Okay, I think we're live. So, hi everybody, welcome in. Uh, I'm joined today by Richard Fortier, a good friend of mine, a colleague, fellow humanities teacher, and we uh, we play tons of games together, so it's, that's, that's a good fit. And today, uh, Richard's going to learn uh, how to play Bloody Handed Knave of Bronze. Uh, what do you know about Bronze Age, Richard? I know that uh, it's a period after the the, the end of the, um, the Stone Age, at the end of the Neolithic, in the Bronze Age, they start to um, they start to. There's a couple of like big civilizations that start to prop up um, yep. with specialized workforces and stratified societies, and um, you know a, a lot of actual like international trade. You know, for like the Fertile Crescent and sort of the rest of the Mediterranean, that the sort of the big the big sort of civilizations around the Fertile Crescent actually depend on like a lot of sort of trade with other peoples because the big technology of the time of bronze, like a, an actually easy to work, but very strong metal, like compared to other types of tools that they would have had, yeah. uh, like you need, you need, what do you need? It's like copper and tin, Yeah. right? Yeah, and so, tin and is super rare. Tin, Yes, tin is super rare, and rarely do you find copper and tin in the same place. Yeah. So, like the like the whole technology upon which their society was built required like a, a network of international trade. And I know that at some point, the wheels fell off of this thing, about like seventeen hundred BC. Like the whole world falls apart. <laughs> like yeah. only basically barely survives it. You know, and the other civilizations fall by the Good. wayside. Good. So, so at least you got a uh, whole set of imagery in your mind, and you kind of get the gist of what it looks like, what it feels like. Of yeah. course, we're going to play in a fantasy version of that Bronze Age, right? So, uh, it's kind of our past, but we are not its future. That is, that is the gist of it, right? So, and there's monsters, and like it's it's a Bronze Age of legend, basically. So, we're going to play in the mythic version of the Bronze Age here. So, like the so, way that they understood the the world, we're taking that as fact. Yeah. Basic. Yeah. yeah. Magic okay. exists. Uh, monsters exist. Uh, in fact, monsters in that in that game, they're all creatures that have tasted flesh at least once, and now yeah. they they're cursed with trying to eat human flesh again. Right? They they, they cannot feed on on anything else. So that what makes them monsters. They eat humans. Uh, so basically, how the world was created is you've got the uh, the, wa the the waters from the vault of heaven. They had sex with the waters of the underworld, and that sex generated sounds and moaning and all of God all you want, and that became the language of names. So everything else was created by the sounds produced by the waters of heaven and the waters of the underworld having sex together basically yeah. and that created the 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 earth and firmament so you're you're living on the earth surface right you're you're an earth dweller right when yeah. you die you go to the waters of the underworld like that's that's the fate of everything that dies that lives on the earth basically yeah. so uh, another thing that you need to know is everything in the world or almost everything in the world can have a name, and if something has a name, it has a will and it, and desires, and it will try everything it can to pursue those desires. So trees can have desires, rivers can have desires, the whole desert can have a desire. Uh, so, if, and there's a way to bargain with everything if you, play, if you play a name dealer. You can strike bargains with everything that exists, but it's a bargain. You'll have to pay the price of it. The other type of character you can play, the other type of companion you can play is a fated hero. The fated hero is, as the name suggests, you're a hero, right? You're a badass, violent uh, individual, and you are doing the bidding of a great one, a great famous name of the past. It could be a king, it can be a deity, it can be a totem. You, you pick the type of thing you serve, but they give you supernatural aid in the form of your dice of gold. And the thing is, as a fated hero, you're going to uh, be trying to gain as much destiny as possible because you're trying to get a slice of immortality at the end, right? You're trying to uh, make sure that your fate is glorious and grandiose, right? Uh, but how the game plays, you, you could just die ridiculously and 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 in comically, basically, you could, you could be comedy at the end. We'll see. We'll figure it out. Right. So, as you can see on the screen, uh, Richard right now is, is uh, generously sharing a screen. 
So on the left part, you see uh, the Discord server that you're, we're going to use. And for that gameplay, we're going to use a bot, which is which name uh, is Bash. And the bot will actually handle the uh, game mechanics for us. So it will help a whole lot to uh, in, uh, in what we're trying to do uh, right now. So the first thing we'll need to do before we do your character is I want you, Richard, please, to type in uh, the, uh, the command. Uh, like, oh, can we just scroll up? No, 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 wait. Can you scroll up a bit? Because I, I always forget the formula here. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, it's it's, yeah, we begin a new tale. Good. OK, that, that's what okay. we need. So I'm actually going to just copy it and paste it from here. I don't know if that's going to work. Yep. Here we go. Sure. Boom. Good. OK, so uh, we're going to play a new game. Nice. And now, uh, now you can draw from the well of names. So we'll right. find the name of your character. Kosh. Oh, that is super good. That's so easy. You're that's a like Kosh. Kosh. it's like Conan. I like that. That's like yep. mm, it's got some oomph to it. Yep, I really yeah, I dig it. And it's easy <laughs> to remember, right? So yeah. that's perfect. So, so in you can your, type that over here. Yep. Kosh. Oh, let me let me just focus on your character sheet so we sit just a bit better here. And everything yeah. is yeah. Okay, so that's I've got, a copy. I've got a saved copy of your form fillable PDF open on my on my desktop so I can track my uh, my changes to my character sheet. Yep, that's perfect in that way. So now we need to do like the next thing we need to figure out is I do the bidding of so we need a new name. Okay. Yep. So I will again draw from the of names. Yep. Talfash. Oh, that's cool. Okay. That's cool. That's a cool sounding name. Okay. So Talfash, that's a good start. Uh, the rule when you use the will of names is you need to be able to pronounce the name with a straight face. Like if if it's like if you cannot manage to pronounce it or if it makes you laugh every time, like it, that's not a good name. But Talfash, <laughs> Talfash works. So, That's not conducive to immersion and suspension of disbelief. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it, it will, you'll always be stopped by laughing. So, uh, so Talfash, who's who's Talfash? You get to decide it. You get to pick it. Talfash is the, the Sky Father. Oh, okay. So he's he's a Sky God, right? Um, among yeah. the other possible Sky Gods, Tal, yeah. Talfash is one of them. Okay, good, yeah. good. So type it beside it. Talfash is Sky Father. Oh, okay. Yeah, so now, it's there, man. Yeah, Talfash. <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds very nice. So now we need to know how many immortal dice of gold you'll get from from Talfash helping you, right? So so your your send there, Talfash is uh is going to give you a quest. We'll figure out what he wants, but we need to define a bit more uh, Talfash. So below the, the line of his name, you'll see six uh uh well, epithet or, or qualities, or qualifiers that you can give it. So, uh, well, we'll for each one that is true, you, we will check it. And when we roll dice, that will give you one immortal dice of gold for each one that we check, basically. Okay. Makes sense? Yeah. So how many are we picking of these? Well, let's see. Uh, do you think that the Skyfather would be feared? He could be. Uh, yeah, yeah could, because so. like the the sky the sky gives us what we need, uh, but can also wreak havoc, right? Like there's you know the, the sky is unpredictable to a degree sometimes, you know, like yeah. uh, thunderstorms and lightning, very very frightening. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and hurricanes and stuff. So he's feared. Yeah, he's uh, feared. Is he mighty. Well, like sky probably, father. probably. Oh, yeah. That's mighty. You know, if, if it's stronger than elephant. like the the sky and the heavens, we try to read to it to, to, to determine our you know our fates and everything. It might feel like he's almighty, you know. Yeah. Okay. So then I think he might be known to all that live in the region, at least, right? So where like we don't know yet what area we live in. We don't even have to name a country or anything like this. But I feel like because he's a sky father, people know him, right? The sky yeah. covers everything else. Yeah. Uh, like if you know anything about any of the gods, you know, like you remember to you know say your little blessing to the sky father or whatever. 
Yeah. So uh, is it beautiful? Maybe not, right? Maybe that's not his main trait, right? It's more about... Yeah. Okay. Uh, is it generous? Yes, yes. Because the rains and the sun uh, bring us everything we need. We're ultimately like dependent on, on him okay. for to, to impregnate Mother Earth <laughs> over and over. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is good. So he's generous that way. Yeah. Uh, and uh, in, oh, it's pri present in Eidolon. Uh, the idea here is that if he's present in some kind of Eidolon, you, you have to carry some kind, of, some kind of idol in which the Skyfather is inside and you need to kind of carry that statue or amulet or what have you. I feel like it would bind the sky to something that is too hurtly, right? So I don't know if it really fits for that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. No, I think that this is good. He's so, everywhere. He's everywhere. Yeah. He's always over us. Yeah. Yeah, instead. So that that that's super. Uh you've got four dice of gold, which is super great for a faded hero. Now yeah. we need to know who is their oracle. So again, we need a name. So we will draw from the well of names. Talia. That's good. Ta wow. Yeah, especially that it's got the same sort of prefix as Talfash, right? Oh, you're Tal right. Oracle, it could literally just be a title, right? Like the Talyog is Oracle of, uh, or speaker in the name of, or whatever, of Tal, of Talfash. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I like it. So, okay, so the like Oracle Tal is... Tal just means sky, you know? And like yeah, maybe something like this. And like the Talyog is like the reader of the sky or whatever. Okay, it's cool. So Talyog is their oracle. Oh yeah, sometimes with that, as, as I said, like it, it could happen, uh, but we can see it. And now, what does Tal Fascist Sky Skyfather demands of you right now? What's your quest, basically? To strike down his enemies like lightning. Kaush uh, means lightning. Okay, but we need something a bit more specific, right? What would be the, the specific quest that you're onto right now? Oh, okay. Um, and don't be shy to drop an, another name for, for some kind of enemy, antagonist, or object of your quest. Well, then let's, let's do that. Let's do okay, that. Okay, good. From the Well of Names. Kinrim. Oh, Kinrim. okay. Yeah, Kinrim. Uh, Kinrim, uh, Kinrim is um, Kinrim is the the leader of a cult that uh, that believes that the that the earth that the earth below is the source of all divine power, and that's a heresy. Oh. That's a heresy that the earth that the earth is more important than the sky. Okay, good, good. So, uh, and what does Kosh wants you to do? Get rid of Kinrim. Get rid of Kinrim, yeah, and to, to, to yeah to strike as his lightning and strike fear into them so that they can realize his beauty and generosity once again. Okay, good, good. So yeah, so so it demands that uh, you uh, strike Kinrim down and convert his followers, something like this. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it might not be ideal, but uh, like it's fine as long as we can remember what we're, what we're trying to do here. Yeah. I don't know if there's an option to make it better, but yeah, strike okay. Kinrim down and bring his followers back. Yeah, good. Back in the fold. Yeah. So we're almost done creating the characters. So as you can notice, it's going super fast. Uh, the thing that we need now is to find a trophy that you've got. Something that you, that it doesn't need to be useful. It's just it's just something that's on display and that you show everybody and it gives you more dice to roll. It, it, it boosts your own rolls. It could be a weapon, it could be a piece of armor, it could be anything. It could even be a person. I've got a... Um, I've got a plume. I've got a great big feather. Oh, okay that I believe to be a phoenix feather. It's good. Okay, cool. So uh, like type on the first line or trophies, you can type in uh, phoenix feather. It's cool. Yeah. That's very good. Uh, great. It doesn't even need to do anything specific. It's just that when you when you show up in a scene, you show that 
like people can see that feather and it impresses them and because you've got that it basically boosts your ego to do amazing yeah. stuff cool. so well it's a phoenix right so uh if we look just below it you've got again right uh epithets or uh, qualities to pick so i think that the phoenix is old right it's it's eternal it's immortal so it's old yeah. as for sure yeah um the feather itself might not be quite generous, uh, but the phoenix unless, be... unless it's to unless it lets me raise the dead, <laughs> you know, like, like unless it. Oh, yeah. Okay, sure. Phoenix feather that let, that lets me raise the dead. Sure. Yeah, or like I haven't tried it, but I believe, like I saw the the great bird get struck by lightning, struck down and die. I saw it burst into flames and get back up and fly away and i took a feather from the ground oh nice okay that's cool so phoenix feather can bring people back from the dead so that's cool uh so yes it's generous right it's it's a life-giving thing uh it is yeah. mighty that's for sure giving life back is a mighty feat uh is it known to all that when you pick a feather from a phoenix you can raise a dead maybe not the maybe phoenix not is known to I, all. I think it's just that i believe it I, I like I, I don't like we'll find out if it works. You yeah. know? But, but like, technically it works. It's it's true. Like if we decided to give it raises back the dead, it's true. We just like it's not known to everybody that this this thing does. This it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it might uh, be consumed in flames if I try to use it in that way. Like we'll see. Maybe I have to trade we'll it off at some point, you know? Uh okay. So I suggest you kind of save everything we've done so far yeah. so we don't lose it. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine there. Yeah, just, well, yeah. We just want to make sure that we don't lose everything we just created here, because otherwise it's, uh, we need kind of to. So see, you've lost your name, Kosh. Oh, it's back, okay. yeah, everything's good. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, great. So in order to play the game, usually we would be like three or four people. So every one of us would create their characters and present it to, uh, to the rest of the players. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we're just going to be the two of us, me and Richard. Uh, so I won't be playing a companion. I'll just play uh, the will of the name of the world, right? I know the will of the names of the world, basically. So I play the rest of the world and the rest of the characters in the world itself. Oh, I think we've got a fellow player joining us here. <laughs> okay. Player two has entered the arena. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> okay, so before we launch into play proper, I think that would be a good idea to just quickly look at what are your, your actions and the options beside them. So you, at least you know a bit more how your character works. So on the second page, you've got four options. Yeah, yeah, I'll uh, I'll bring back the focus because yeah, we need to kind of be able to read this. My bad. Okay, so faded hero, they can when they do one of the four actions here, I will call you to roll your dice, and you roll everything. You roll you your two mortal dice of jet because you always got get two mortal dice of your jet. This is basically your health, right? It's it's your ability to to endure some come some kind of harm here. You always roll the dice of your trophy, and you always roll the dice of your great one. So the great one gives you dice of gold, and both trophies and your mortal dice, of, well, your mortal dice, they're all black dice, dice of jet, basically. So okay. we'll see how it goes. Uh, yeah, so in the actual Caravan Sarai uh, server, you should type, I portray uh, Kosh, the faded hero. Yeah. Good. So now when we make dice roll, Bash will interpret the dice roll in function of your particular companion type. So we'll deal with the rest of the actions. So let's go back to the action that you've got. So the first one is course. Course is when you uh when you want someone to do what you want and they might not be inclined to so you kind of threaten harm uh to them right so when you roll for coerce uh what what could happen is you roll the dice and let's say that you've got uh to pick two consequences out of the tree so two options beside the 
a little axis. Uh, so you could decide that, well, okay, they do as I demand or else I may harm them. And I am not harmed in that exchange, right? They, they, they can't harm me uh, in any way. Well, then it means that you leave the third one, no other is armed to me. And if there's somebody else present in the scene, I can decide that I harm them. I cause them some form of harm there. Testing yourself is the awesomest action for the Faded Hero because uh, you're trying to do feats and deeds that are way above what a mortal could, could do. And this is how you can gain followers. Followers become trophies, they boost your dice. And, uh, and and you get to look very good. And you can also seize more destiny that way. We'll talk about destiny when it comes up, but you, you can gain more destiny. This is how you become immortal, right? You're working on creating your own legend there. Um, follow your passion for another. It means that um, you might see uh, a beautiful princess or what have you, right? And it's not the right timing, but like she's so hot and gorgeous that you just have to follow your passion for that person. Or it could be somebody you want to be friend with. You want to strike and start a new a new friendship with them. Or it could be because uh, you follow your your passion of hatred towards somebody else, so, uh, and you want to change them their minds basically in some way. So it's about like just. Your feelings take the better of you, and you just pursue some 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 person. Usually, uh, it can also uh, it can transform a follower into uh, a a special person to you, significant person to you, and that person becomes an additional trophy as well. So that can be super good. And the last action you can take is you can lead your followers. You so you promise something to them. Uh, so that they can, they will follow you and do as you want, <laughs> and uh, and like you hope that uh, you achieve how you promise to your followers, and uh, and that way you can also seize destiny because they just love you basically. So, fated heroes, you're trying to impress other people. That that's that's the the the, the best way to gain more uh, trophies is to impress people by testing yourself, and then once you've got followers, well. You promise stuff to them, you make them follow you, and you might find one that is special to you, and you follow your passion for them. That's basically the big elements of other faded hero here. Yeah. So, okay. So to play, in order to play itself, I think I'm not, I'm, no, I'm not forgetting anything here. So good. So in order to play, what we need to do is I need to ask you a couple of questions. So what I'll do is I'll. Uh, We'll lose the focus here because I want to see your face a bit, even though we mostly see your character sheet. I want to see your face a bit. Okay, good. So, because I know the will of the names of the world, I'll be portraying the rest of everything that goes on, right? So, Richard has control over what his character does and say, says. You cannot tell me about your intentions as if you were an objective narrator. That doesn't exist in the world, and I cannot also tell you the content of the heart of something as if it was an objective truth. So if you speak to me about your general intentions, or if I speak to you about the general intention of a character in the scene, know that it's probably a lie. Uh, it's supposed to be a lie. I, I, it's supposed to be uh, or maybe a truth that is like half truth. With or, half yeah. truth. Yeah. Because the idea is that uh, there's there are no objective narrators to that story, so we you need to decide whether or not you trust the words of any other characters you encounter, and the same goes for me. My characters has to have to decide if they trust your words or not. So like, like in real life, I I cannot read your mind, you cannot read mine. So like, this is how we go. So. Uh, the actual gameplay starts with, uh, with a couple of questions. Um, so, well, first question, Kosh, where are you? I'm on my horse. Oh, I'm so on my horse. horse. Yeah, I'm on my horse on the plains. Okay. Um, at a high, at a raised elevation. Looking at a distance at what I think to be a traveling caravan of Kinrim and her followers. I'm far okay. away, but I think I know where they are. And I'm kind of like watching them from a distance. 
Okay, so so you're following Karen, you suspect that it's Kinrim, but you're not sure yet, right? You need to reach right. to them first. Okay, good. Uh, the next question is, how do you appear? What do you look like right now on your horse? Um, like golden, man, like golden tan, uh, shirtless, rippling, like uh, arms with like leather bands sort of around the arms here and oh. there, a long like um, a, a long uh, braid, you know, a long braid. Um, two bronze curved sabers at my side are they like kopesh yeah they're like curved kopesh yeah okay so like these yeah, curved so like blades. straight up then a, and then a hook yeah yeah nice yeah. okay like one for each hand one of them belonged to my twin brother who died oh. and now i bear both of them as i ride my horse and i name them castor and pollux Oh, it's cool. So yeah, so so some kind of Greek inspiration there. What what are, are your hair like? His hair is like pulled back. It's dark hair pulled back, uh, and then like a, a long braid going down the oh, back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, shirtless, um, like and like you know, um, like leather leather pants. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what's the color of the horse? Oh, like uh, like blonde, 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 like golden. Oh, okay, okay. So, okay, so you, we've got golden skin, golden horse. We've got yeah. these bronze kopesh on your back, and yeah. these leather bands and stuff that kind of uh, they 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 help uh, show your muscles, right? They they make yeah. your arms seem even bigger and more muscular. So it's, that it's, it's not like massive, massive, but everything is like well defined. You know, everything is yeah. like boom, 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 cut, and yeah. Okay, so, so the guy never skips a, 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 an arm day at the gym. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> it. His, his lifestyle ends up leading to, you know, like uh, <laughs> a type of intermittent fasting. Like he eats a big lunch, but he's busy all day. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, and uh, what exactly are you doing right now? So you're staring in the distance. So, so what do you do next? Uh he 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 closes his eyes and he tries to smell the air like a wind starts to come from from the direction so now he's downwind of the camp and he tries to smell the air to 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 see if he can like get a feeling of what's going on okay um as you smell in the air you uh you notice uh, a few scent of perfumes uh like luxury perfumes coming in from the caravan so they might be religious people from kinrim or they might be traders and mar merchants yeah. but yeah, like yeah, you don't know just... for sure but it smells of luxury right uh super rare perfumes and scents and uh, and incense and these kind of fragrance uh and you know that like these people they're they seem to be wealthy and and, and super rich right and they might even have actually good wine decent wine with them so that would be nice mm -hmm. and so so you um the the caravan like advances towards um well the serai basically right to a point where they can stop and some kind of oasis uh, not, not an oasis because it's a plane right some desert but uh but they the the advance to a, to a place where you know um it's there's a kind of small structures so that people can go and camp there, right? It's it's not occupied by anybody. It's 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 a place on the road where people can stop there because there's a river flowing and you can drink and you can you can make camp in, on your way to the next big city, basically. So so you've got this kind of a pit stop, basically, where 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 uh, you, you can rest, and the caravan is is uh, moving towards there, and you see that they're they're aiming to leave the road and make camp there for the night. Okay. All right. So with a, you know, with a, with a, with a quick sort of like look up to the sky, uh, Kosh tries to, um, you know, summon up his courage and he touches the, he touches the Kopesh that belonged to his brother. Yeah. Who needs a name, I think. Cause he's going to yeah. say a little to his dead twin. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Let's pull yeah, him a yeah. name. Yeah. Man. I have the fun of that game. It's just creating new names. Ashmum. Ashmum yeah, is good. Okay. okay. Ashmum. And Ashmum, like Kaush means lightning. Ashmum means thunder. 
Oh man, that's for sure. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, it's good. It's good. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so thunder is dead. We still got lightning. You still got the lightning, but you'll hear the thunder. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, yeah, it's it's in the cupish now. That's what? it. Yeah. Okay, so the way we play it could happen in the gameplay that the cupish becomes a trophy for you. Like it could, yeah. could happen. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Okay. So he like touches it and he he says, "Come, brother, it's our time." <laughs> Nice. Starts okay. To down, down the hill slowly, like towards the the open plains, towards where they're where they're going. Okay. So you uh you get near the 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 well what is uh, starting to become a camp of the caravan. So uh, most like they've got horses, they've got camels as well, and they've got these weird mounts. It's it's like um it's like an ostrich, but even bigger. Uh, it's, it's, it's four legs. It's got these tiny little wings that are just useless, uh, but it's got feathers all around. It literally looks like an ostrich, but with four legs basically, and you can ride it a bit like a horse or camel. Um, and they're, they're smaller, uh, like you, you see that the ostriches, the, the, um, the saddles and everything that you like all the, uh, the gear, right. To ride them. They're in lane inlaid with gold and bronze and, and small gems. So so you see that these are more like um, mounts for uh, noble people or rich people. Yeah. They're not to carry stuff around. It's just, it's something, it's, it's a luxury mount, basically. So you see the can they're set up and you see that, yeah, they seem to be rich. And uh, surprisingly enough, there's a lot of women, young women there, lots and lots of them. Um, and they're all well dressed in fineries and silk, and they wear a like coal, you know, the big black makeup that they used to do yeah. that time. So they wear these big uh, lines of coal around their eyes. It's both for the sun, but also to decorate themselves. Yeah. And by the by the look of their makeup, you know that they're from way down south, a kingdom far away down south. So. Kinrim is probably not among them, among them. Okay. Well, I was I was reading imagery and uh, symbolism in the in the birds and like uh, Kosh is, is seeing these these mounts, and I think it's the first time he's seen mounts like this. Yeah. And he looks at them and he's like, ah, oh, what an aberration! These poor creatures, these poor birds, bound to the earth. Oh, okay. So, oh, okay. So, okay, you're you're taking them into pity a bit. Okay, good. Yeah, well, he's taking um, it seriously. He's like, and and like, and a laid laden with like gold, like dug up from beneath the earth. Like this is not, this is not the, this is not a normal <laughs> fate for birds. <laughs> no, no, that's for sure. That's for sure. So you see, uh, so as you. Uh, well, I, I guess you're approaching the uh, the whole camp, right? Like? Slows down, like as I start to, you know, um, think that perhaps this is not the this is not the group I'm looking for. I slow down, you know, and I try to make myself look, you know, not threatening, just just kind okay. of approaching, you know. Well, you you can notice a few of the uh, of the the young women there. Uh, they giggle a bit. <laughs> And they point at you, and they're like, "Cause you're you're all cut and buff and stuff. Like you're not enormously huge, but like it's well defined muscle, and you seem like a, a, a like a tough warrior, right? And we see the swords and everything. So so they're all they're acting kind of a they're giggling, they're impressed, and as they laugh, you see uh, you see a like an old fat man looking at them sternly and like going in something um, of the shush like he seems to be in command here uh, like you just tell him to be quiet and they all <gasps> like this and they all uh, like not run but they all go back to their business setting up their tents and, and, and working on that but and they're all dressed up in fineries and everything like something uh, something seems amiss here uh, something seems yeah. a bit fishy here, but so yeah, it's, yeah. It's fishy. Yeah. So the the old uh, fat guy comes uh, to you. Uh, he, he has these, um, you know, like a scepter with uh, short uh, lashes of, of of leather, but it's not a whip exactly, right? It's just a, a stick of status, basically, just to show his status. And he's just walking and and 
like making the, the, the leather bands just turn around, spin around in the air. And he walks towards you and he has a, his, uh, his hand down his belt, right? The, 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 his thumb in his belt inside his pant and is looking at you. Uh, and he's, he's saying, greetings, stranger. What brings you to our little camp here? Oh, greetings, Uncle. How's uh, how's business? Okay. Just Uncle. That's just like a sign of respect to an older, respectable man, you know? Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, can you draw us another name, please? Yeah. Okay, we'll name that guy. I just hope it's pronounceable. Yushlaun? Yushlaun. Oh, my God. Uh, let's just call him Yush for now. It's good. Yeah, Yush. Yush is good. <laughs> Well, you, you, you're, it's your lucky day. Yush has got many beauties and many goods and many treasures uh, on my way to... Uh, can you draw us on the name? We need a native for the city that he's going to. Ushnamnu. Ushnamnu? Sure, Ush why not? Okay. Ush yeah, so he's, so Yush is on his way to Ushnamnu, the big city. Uh, but uh, I still got a few wares that I can trade uh, to such a fine warrior as you. Or maybe you're looking for some uh, leisure time. You tell me that these beauties are are tradable chattel to you. Well, he, he points a bunch of them and says. All these ones are uh, are to uh, join the the harem of uh, the great uh, king of Ushman. Ushnamnu, yeah, <laughs> okay. So half these ones are going to go to the harem, but uh, but I got a few uh, a, f a few ladies that I that I brought to uh, to well satisfy desires and and thirst of a uh, fine gentleman such as you. Okay, well, I'm feeling heroic right now, so, like, watch out, buddy. Here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> All right, so he says, uh, he says, I don't know where, from where you come, uncle, but under these skies, we do not bind birds to the ground. Oh, so you want to, so you want to play the bird? What, what do you, what do you do? Yeah, I'm not talking about the birds. I'm talking about, like. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. good. So what do you do? I say, these are people. These are people. They are not for you to trade. They are not for you to own. They have oh. a past and they have a future. And that future is not for you to decide. Oh, okay. So he, he's, uh, he's laughing a bit, right? Oh, 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 oh. It's not the first time some, someone tells that to Yush, but uh, it just means that I, I haven't found yet what you desire. What do you want from Yush then if it's not a fine companion? Well, we'll start with information. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm looking for, uh, perhaps uh, as you've been traveling, uh, I've been looking for a for sign of, um, of a caravan, a group uh, led, by, uh, led by one known as Kinrim. Hmm. I wonder if you've seen them. Um, he looks, he looks at you and he, um, he seems to be, uh, like absorbed in his thought a bit, right? Like if he's trying to reminisce something and he says, I didn't hear of a Kinrim, uh, but maybe, uh, maybe on the way to, uh, to Ush Namnu, yeah, okay. maybe on the way to Ush Namnu, you, you can meet them. Um, uh, there is to be, uh, um, like it's supposed to be a special week uh, in the in the town. This is why I bring all these ladies to the harem. Uh, we're going to celebrate the uh, introduction of a new deity in the pantheon of uh, of Ushnamnu. So yeah, seems like a new god is in town or will be in town soon.
What you do? <laughs> How much muscle does he have around here? <laughs> um. Well, yeah. Like he must have. A, other, so he must have other like warriors or something, or bodyguards or something. You see a dozen of uh, of uh, let's call them handlers. Uh, so yes, yeah, you see a dozen of them. They, they don't they don't even work on the tent, right? They'll just look at the ladies uh, singing singing up the camp, and they the yeah. Nothing too big for uh, for such a, such a hero as you, right? Maybe uh, maybe you're good enough to 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 rise to that challenge. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good to me. That sounds good to me. That sounds real good to me. So, what do you want to do? He says, uh, "I think you do have what I want, actually, and I'm willing to make a deal with you oh. because I'm generous." as the sky father above us but know too that i am also to be feared as his hand i pull out my feather and i say i think you're going to give me that stick and walk away oh so you're trying to coerce him into giving you the, his yeah, status stick. His, his symbol of his symbol of status and just like fo just like be gone okay so you're you're trying to coerce him to give you what yes. what he wants. Absolutely. Good. So to make that very clear. <laughs> okay. So yeah. so okay. So we'll we'll uh, look here. But no, please uh, stay on your on your first base of stop, character sheet because we need to find out how many dice you've got. So okay. Yeah. So you've got your two mortal dice of jets. So they're they're so they're jet dice, and you've got uh, how many do you got from the, your trophy? I think we said three, right? I think there were three: old, mighty, and generous. Good. So. For now, type roll five jet, and I uh, think that uh, your god gives you four gold. So five jet, four gold. So is it roll five jet and four gold? Just or roll five jet, four gold in, okay. in one sentence. Yeah. Like that. All right. Perfect. Good. So you have rolled one strike upon your muscles as a jet, three strikes upon <gasps> your muscles as a gold. Of gold. Oh, yes. That's going to be good. <laughs> uh, it's going to be awesome. So you have succeeded. You you uh, choose two consequences as a fated hero. Oh, oh yes, oh yes. Okay, uh, you might you may perform a, a mighty feat. Uh, so it means that you'll be able to pick all three consequences from your course, and you get to describe how something mythic and legendary and over the top happens. Right. So. And uh, let's see, and you see two destiny because you've shouted your name and you've shown your trophy. So in the destiny, you can click to destiny. Okay. And your character sheets. That's all awesome. Yep. Good. And now we can we can uh, scroll a bit down to look at the consequences of course action, right? Yeah. So okay. So course, you've got only three consequences to pick anyway. So in your case, because it's a mighty feat, you get to do all three of them. So You'll do as you demand, or you may harm them. Uh, you are you won't be harming the exchange because why won't you pick that? And no other people is armed, so none of the lady is going to be harmed at all, right? Great. Super. So, um, okay. So uh, Yoshi is going to refuse your offer, right? Uh, he doesn't do as you demand. Uh, so you you get to harm them and in this bunch of goons, uh, but the 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 people in the caravan, the ladies, they're not harmed and you're not harmed here. So describing the mighty feat, how how it happens, right? You you won't just give it to you. The goons are going to jump in. Um, I think it's as as he speaks, right? Like as as Kaush speaks. And says like you'll give it to me and like as the sort of the or else the unspoken or else comes like thunder rumbles in the sky oh like, i don't even have to move right is that okay if it's just like the the world around kind of contributes to like the fact that this like it's just a misha bow timing like a really good timing an unnaturally good timing of like there's thunder rumbling as his like eyes flash with anger oh okay and um like you can't even go over the top, right? Like in your eyes, you we see lightning going yeah, in the lightning, eyes, yeah. and his eyes start to like, yeah. And you've got your your kopesh right in one hand, and uh, like inside it, like because of the curve, right? In like the both end of the curve are joined with lightning, it's like this behind yeah. it. Like we see that you're empowered by the 
sky fought there. So, um, so yeah, it doesn't give you exactly what you want. You, you won't just make as you demand. So you, you, uh, well, how do you harm them all? Okay, so um, Kaush turns as if, as if, um, what was his name? Yush, as if yeah. Yush was less than nothing. Kaush turns his back on him and turns towards the, uh, turns towards the goons. Yeah. And <laughs> releases the lightning from his sword at the goons okay. and his horse just kicks backwards and kicks the, the boss in the face. Puff. <laughs> okay, good. So lightning goes, hit, hits the goons. They're all afraid and they go in dismay. And, um, and now uh, Yush is, is, is uh, well, he's harmed, right? He, he just fell off his horse and, um, and, and uh, he, he, uh, well, he, he, cl he clenches his, his status staff that we won't give it to you, but uh, now he's harmed and he's basically at your mercy. So what do you do? Do you finish him? Uh, I tell him last chance. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, now he's he's uh he's kind of afraid. Um, so good. Yeah. yeah. Last chance. I offer you your life. Oh. Okay. Okay. Uh. So yeah. Uh. Yeah. Roll to course again because uh right. like he doesn't he doesn't want to lose his status right it's his own life basically. Okay. So same uh, thing. Five five jet four gold. Yeah. So two strikes on your mortal dice of jet, two strikes on your mortal dice of gold, you choose two consequences, and a mighty feat again. Oh my god, okay. Uh, and you this time around, though, you don't get any destiny. But you get, again, to pick all three consequences. Okay, so everything goes great. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so, so does he do as I demand, or am I going to yeah, have to harm? Like that's this, this time around, he, he does as you demand. He gives you the, the, the status, and like, well, yeah, okay, like, just spare me. And he kind, kind of climbs back on his horse and just bolts away, basically. Okay. And I get to do like a mighty, a crazy feat, like a, yeah. like a, a mighty yeah. feat. Okay. And I say, careful on the road, can be dangerous out there. And I turn towards his, I turn towards the guys that have just been like bowled over with lightning. Yeah. And I wave the phoenix feather at them. Oh. Okay. Like, hopefully, just, like, giving them a chance to, like, save their lives before they, you know, die from electrocution and let them just follow the boss. Oh, okay. You so I tell uh, the boss, careful on the road. It's dangerous out there. You might want your goons. <laughs> oh, okay. And you use the feather to kind of revive and revive the lives of goons. Revive, yeah, good. Do the yeah, damage. Okay, nice. Yeah. So to offer them back their lives. Like, I meant it. You can have your lives. Just FO, leave. <laughs> Leave me alone. That's cool. Okay, nice. So now you've got the, the, the kind of status staff of uh, of that guy. Um, oh, yeah. Um, it it definitely is a, a trophy. Uh, so let's create it on, on your character sheet because, cool. like, it seems like it it gave him something like a, an actual status. Uh, so how could we call this? Uh, it's a rod, basically, right? Yeah, uh, Yush's yeah. Rod of Mastery. <laughs> oh, good. Okay, so uh, it's, well, it's not old. No. It's not exactly old, and it's not, uh, it's not known to all, but it is generous. Because it gives you kind of a, a way to make deals and trade and with every kind of people. So it, it is generous that way. It gives you an end to make trades and, and conduct business. Mm -hmm. And it is mighty because he seemed to have been able to kind of subdue the will of many people with that. Like his goons and the ladies that followed, they seem to be kind of a, a bit under the power of that rod, basically. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So that's going to be two dice of jet later on for you. So you've got right. the... You just got two more dice to roll, basically, next time uh, we'll make action. So, yeah, so you're there in the camp. Uh, Yush is, is 
is running away with his goons and you've got like about 50 young women looking at you giggling again okay like, like this uh, are are there fires lit are there like are there cooking fires and and things yep they're setting set, this up like yep. they've set and, up to, to spend the night or something okay so i say and you 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 can smell the uh you can smell the uh like um meat of goat uh and, and sheep uh being cooked and also uh something that you're not familiar with but uh, it smells it smells like uh, a special type of bread it's uh when you look at it it's a small bun like uh, you uh it's made of barley uh mostly and um yeah barley and other grains but barley is the main one it smells super good and um you uh, you also notice that one of the young lady she she's she's kind of shy to go at it right she she's do it quietly and she always look around and she kind of pulls a jar a, a huge jug of wine yeah as if i it say was half forbidden i i point to her and i say that's a good idea for we shall not bring revelry to any celebration of a false new god a pretender this is your reward. Come, gather, bring wine for all. Tonight we celebrate your new lives and discuss what you will make of it. Okay, so are you trying to uh, to to show that you can take uh, take uh, uh, well, like you can drink a whole lot without getting drunk? And are you, are you trying to show that you're you're? No, <laughs> okay. I'm trying to show I'm trying to show uh, 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 generosity and goodwill and like let's let's take time. To, like I'm. I'm definitely not letting this wine make it to any kind of celebration in town of something that I'm against. And okay. like, you all look like you deserve a drink. And like, let's just, let's gather together and have like a moot, you know, like let's get together and figure out what's the plan. You know, like I've got things, I've got things I could propose to you. Do you want me to just escort you to this, to this town? Like, are you happy with this life? Like, you know, you're free and staying in the type of life that you're in is an option. Okay. Like I'm not gonna just impose on you to like follow me or whatever. I want to find out like what's 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 your deal. But well, we, we like them to uh to be kind of impressed by you and follow you because they could become your followers as well. Yeah, like I'm gonna go softly on that. I don't want to just impose myself as like you ought to follow me, but like I just raised the dead and shit and freed them from from their shackles. Like we'll see. <laughs> okay, if they sure. Want to follow me, that's okay. I'm gonna play it cool. <laughs> because one way you, one way you can test yourself is this, right? You could, you could be partying all night with them and show that you you got a stamina to do a full night of party with them and then enjoying yourself with them, and that that's one way that you can test yourself, right? You can show that you can you can take a drink, right? You can you can take a, a your liquor basically. Yeah, I I think I want to I think I want to impress I, I want to test myself in. Um... Yeah, no, I'm thinking too. Like I'm thinking too. 21st century. I just gotta. Yeah, no, I gotta be like a like a Bronze Age hero. Sure. Yep. Let's show them that I can. Let's show them that I can take a reasonably high amount of wine and still keep my wits about me in like a discussion of like no no. But here's what's what's the plan? <laughs> you know. Okay. Good. Good. And uh, so so you you take your whole jug of wine right just to yourself yeah. and they, they 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 share the rest around and uh and when like you're like you, you probably go through a couple of jugs of wine because there's tons of it, right? Like yeah. I was going to supply a huge party over there, so you drink all night. So yeah, test yourself. You get to roll, and this time around you get to roll seven dice of jet and still four dice of gold because you got your trophies, right? And you don't need to say your name again because you you presented yourself once to them. Oh wow, okay. So you've got. Three strikes on your mortal dice of jet and no strikes on your mortal dice of go. So this time around, you don't get to do a mighty feat. Uh, but you've got so many fours that you get to, uh, you gain four destinies out of it. Oh my god. And your great name may demand something of you. Good, good, good. Okay, so add so four destinies. A great name now. Yeah, that's it. Okay, yep. cool. So I'm checking off four more destinies. Is that correct? Yep. That's true. Then let's look at the actions themselves, like your options for testing yourself. Okay, so you've got 
two consequences that you can pick and the rest I can subvert them. So you, so what do you want to do here? You wanted to keep your wits. So that, that is the trial you want to succeed at. Uh, and or yeah, I, don't think, I don't think I'm going to succeed at that. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. So uh, um, I think what I want is no other is harmed. Good. Like the party doesn't go off the rails and, and people start doing things or I start doing bad things to people. And they know that they're not drinking themselves to death either. Um, I don't succeed at this trial. I might be harmed or shamed. But I'm going to seize a destiny and take the take the followers as a as a trophy from among the witnesses. Good. So things don't go as I had planned them to, but things turn out pretty cool anyway. But th but I look a bit a fool, but they love me anyway. Okay, good. So then, yeah. So let's go back to our, to your character sheet. Okay. So add a, another destiny, which is awesome, by the way. Yeah. This is super cool. And now be below, uh, like, let's, let's create a new trophy. Uh, so, um, har well, okay, uh, let's call them uh, uh, silk clothed ladies, something like this, right? That's, that's yeah. a bunch of your followers, right? Uh, okay. So they're not old. They are generous. They are generous of their time, company. Uh, they are known to all because Yoshi is a like is a famous dealer of harem material, basically. Mm. Uh, but they're not exactly mighty, right? Like no. they're not strong or powerful. But yeah, that's another two dice of jet for you for next time you roll. So now you've got a whole bunch of these women as your followers, basically. Um, so let's go back to your the consequences of your actions. Yeah, let's look, at, like, let's look okay. at what went well and what didn't go well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So nobody's harmed in that party, but yeah, you totally uh, you lose your wits. That's for sure. Uh, so it means that I get to say what happens to your character now because I subvert yeah. the consequences a bit. Because I may and, be, I may well be sh harmed and shamed. You know, like like I don't keep my wits, and it makes sense that I might be harmed or shamed by, by what happens. Okay. Um, oh, okay. You are you're getting a bit drunk, and the ladies are beautiful. And after a while, like like you feel like, well, you know what? Let's have a bit of fun. But um, you're so so drunk that you actually kind of pass out as you're into uh, well, like uh, things are getting a bit more erotic a bit, and 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 they seem super interested and super like, oh yeah, like that guy seems like a a, a powerful lover here. But, yeah, uh, yeah. but you just, he, was, you just he was trying to keep his wits out. about him, right? And and be yep. like, just try to draw out, well, what do you want or whatever. But in the in the end, he just gets really drunk and he's like, glug, 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 glug. you'll have a wonderful new life back in my village. Come and follow me. Yeah! Dancing. <laughs> like the thing he didn't want to say is I'm just going to impose myself upon all yep. of you, right? And then so, like, so. <laughs> so you are shamed because you yeah. didn't stand up to your reputation as a potentially good lover. Yeah. And when you're shamed as a faded hero, that counts as arm. So you lose one of your two uh, mortal dice of jet that like these ones. But I don't think we, we can click them. Is it possible okay. to do? So? No, I, I don't no, think so. Right? With this. Yeah. Okay. But so okay, you so you lost one. one. I'm down one out of my two health, basically down yes. one. And one so on next my time dice. you take arm, yeah. you die, unless yeah. you do something to uh to rest and you hear the voice of uh what was your uh. Talfash. Talfash. Talfash, okay. So Talfash, the Sky Father, talks to you and says, bring back the birds to their homeland. This is the demand that he makes of you. You need to bring these birds back to their homeland. And by, does he mean birds or does he mean the, la the ladies? That's... No, he means the actual birds now. Oh, okay. <laughs> the ladies. Because <laughs> I was using it metaphorically before, like, you yep. ought not bind these birds to the ground. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, so yeah, so uh, you're supposed to, of course, write in his demand, like, uh, remove the saddles out of them and, like, turn them free, basically. Like, yeah. make them free and bring them back into their original land. Okay, like accompany them yeah. back. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you, uh, like, well, morning comes, splitting headache, of course, yeah. right? Because it's, it's been done. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's it it is hard, and uh, 
you um, you wake up in a weird position. Uh, your butt is naked and up, right? Your face is planted in the ground, like it, like it's shameful, right? It, it's I'm not. Sure. Yeah. yeah, you you don't look like an awesome warrior at all. It's like the real uh, shit comes in in the morning when everybody else wakes up before I do and finds me snoring with my bare ass. <laughs> like, <laughs> <funny> sky. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, and in your case, in your religion, pointing your butt to the sky is actually an insult to Talafash, right? right? Uh, yeah. You're not supposed yeah. to show your butt to, to your sky god. Sure. So, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, you wake up, you, you have smell of... of Breakfast in the morning. Uh, your uh, your circle the ladies. They 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 uh they managed to to uh to start the uh, the meal, and uh, one of them seems to be the oldest, the eldest uh among them. Uh, we'll need a name for her. So we shall draw from the well of names. Kuhuaf. Well, okay, no, let's try another let's try one. one more time. <laughs> Apologies to any students whose mum's name is Kuhu Half. <laughs> <laughs> uh, draw from the well of names. Mumrugash. Oh my god. Okay, let's Mumrugash. try a third time and then, then we Mum. 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 Okay, Mum. Mum's good. Okay, yeah, good. for the eldest. Mumrugash. Okay, good. So, uh, but yeah, it's shortened to Mum. That's fine. Okay. So, Mum, uh, Mum comes to you, and she says, uh, "Morning, hero." With a uh, like, she's a bit mocking, yeah, <laughs> in, in her tone, right? <laughs> Morning, hero, <laughs> <laughs> and she brings you, um, like it's um, it it's not like it's a it's the type of bread like a looks a bit like a pita bread, uh. Uh, and it's filled with uh with like the meat of of yesterday. It's it's a hearty breakfast, right? It's a hearty meal to, to start the day. Um, and they um they, they they bring this to you, and mom says something like, um, actually, uh, we don't want to go down south, uh, cause uh, if we if we're brought back. To our lands, uh, we it, it will show that our country has uh, hasn't honored its promises to the uh, what's the name of the city again? Can you scroll up a bit? Yeah, I it the name was. Of the city. Uh, um, Ushnam, Ushnamnu. Okay, Ushnamnu. Okay, so so it means that we didn't honor the deal with Ushnamnu, and uh, we'll get punished for that because the gods won't be pleased. And you you like. And when she says that, she looks at the earth. And I, okay, so I nod for a second. I take a bite of the of the food. Okay. He says, "Well then, we will go where you will be as free as the sky. I will take you to my people, and you will stay as long as you wish." Okay. From there. As I was trying to say yesterday before I lost it, <laughs> my desire is to see you free. So I will give you a welcome opportunity to come and join us with our people and be as free as the sky. Okay, so you're trying to lead your followers. Good, good. Yeah, trying to lead. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's perfect. So, okay, so you've got one mortal life of Jed because you've lost one to arm. We, you can yeah. regain this one, you'll get actual good rest uh, and, and regain some bit of honor. Uh, okay. So, so you got one here. Uh, how many dice do you get from your trophies now? Oh my gosh! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven from my so trophies. It's, so it's it's eight. So roll eight jet and still four gold. But you, for now, uh, Talfash is still helping you. Because uh, you might go in the direction where the the birds can be free, but if you don't hunter is the man, he might he might not give you the gold dice anymore, right? So you yeah. need to please his demand at some point. Go ahead. Okay. Let's see what happens. Uh, five strikes on the dice of jet. Three strikes on the dice of gold. Oh my God. Okay. Uh, and give it's it a mighty feat. 
Oh, okay. And uh, okay, so good. So you made the man and you see the destiny here. So one more destiny. That's good. That's great. Okay, and let's scroll down to see the consequences for uh, lead your followers. Lead my followers. Uh, you achieve all your promise. Those who follow you remain unharmed. Uh, you are neither harmed nor shamed. Seize one destiny as your follower adore you. So you're you're you get to pick two consequences. So they'll follow you right after camp. They'll follow you, and you're going to bring them to safety. That's for like it's possible that you do this. Yeah, it says if I I may perform a mighty feat and take a third consequence. Uh, yeah, you're right. So that'll be great. You know what? I'll take everything except to seize one destiny. So like I want to achieve all that I promised. I want them to follow and remain unharmed, and I don't need any more harm or shame. Like, I don't need additional destiny on top of that. Yeah. I'll just take everything I want. Okay. So let's let's say that we skip a few days, right? You, you've traveled with them towards the south. You brought your followers. I just want to do one thing before we go. I say, sure, yes, that. it'll be a mighty journey. But first, mm, this, this, you will make this for my people. This is nourishment for body and the soul. And now I want to test myself and see how much of it I can eat. <laughs> I want oh. to impress them with how much healing nourishment I'm able to take in. This is good for the body and the soul. I'm eating this as if it's the best thing I've ever tasted. And like as much as they want to bring to me to make me happy, I'm going <laughs> to keep going. Okay. <laughs> it's like an attempt. I'm trying to get back my harm, you know, or to, I'm yeah, trying to sure. win back. Like I want to impress them with how much I can eat of this. Sure. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, I, so same thing, right? It's it's, <laughs> it's uh, roll age and four gold and see see what comes up. Oh my god, this is so good. Uh, Three strikes on the jets and none of the, on the gold. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay. So you okay? So as a faded hero. You've seized four destinies. Oh my god, man. Oh, this is amazing. And you're building roll to another demand from your great name. Oh, 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 oh. Three, four more destinies. <laughs> this is amazing. Shall we look at my consequences first? Yeah. Is that what's next here? Yeah, so test yourself you get to pick two here. Well, let's be fair. If you succeed in this trial, you actually gain back your multiple dice of jet. Like it, it comes as a healing. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> I don't want someone else to be harmed. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that context, I might not harm anybody, right? Because that wouldn't make much sense. Or it might just make it so that, that oh, now we're pretty close for actually the food that we needed to make the rest of the journey. It's going to be tight. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> okay, oh, so, so in that case, I know I, I will be neither harmed nor shamed. Yep. And I will succeed in the trial. Okay, so you so you 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 gain back your dice of jet as sustenance. Yeah. But yes, you're right. You ate so much that now, uh, you're 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 on your way towards your land. Uh, so let's give it a few days, right? So so yeah. you you you've, you've traveled and you spent most of the food resources that you've got, and now you're you're close enough to your land, uh, but. Uh, now food is scarce, and you see another caravan uh, roaming around, but that caravan seems, uh, well, less full of merchandise and more full of people and horses. And they, and they, they kind of seem to, uh, to go and, uh, and, and, um, and like when they see you with your bunch of and followers, they make a turn and, and rush towards you. All right. So I, I, I turn to, um, to Mum, right? Uh, Mumlugash. And I say, yeah. Mumlugash, circle the wagons. <laughs> you know, okay. like take a defensive stance and I start to tear off towards the, uh, towards the group of, uh, towards like the cavalry charge. Okay. So, so you go towards the cavalry charge? Yeah. Okay. So, and what do you want to do there? I'm going to. Uh, I I put my I put my my feather yep. tied into my uh, into my braid. Yep. So that it's like flying around behind 
behind my back. And I draw out my two, I draw out my two, uh, my two blades. Yeah. And I make myself look, I make myself look big and menacing. Okay. And that's, don't forget to shout your name. And when you're a fated hero, you, sh you always tell people your name. Tal Fosh! That's the name of your god. And you serve him. Well, that's not me. All right. You're Coach! <laughs> okay. So, so you shout your name and you make, you make yourself quite impressive. Uh, and so do you want to, uh, like, do, do you want them to, to turn around, basically? Do you want to, to scare them off? Or to, like, slow down <laughs> and, like, meet me instead of, <laughs> instead of like, okay. just blowing past me and, and towards my caravan, you know? Okay. So they, uh, they slow down uh, t towards you and they stop. And you see one that seems to be the leader coming up to you. He seems to be one of another like hero, right? Somebody who follows uh, the will of a great name. Uh, so I need a, uh, I need two names now. Oh no, no! What was the name of the of the uh, Earth God? Do we oh, have Earth one? God. No, I don't think we had one yet. Okay, so yeah, so I need so I need a name for that guy and a name for the for the Earth God then. Ludimku. So Ludimku. So he stops and says, Behold, I am Ludimku, doing the bidding of let's see it. Labnu. Labnu, the, the earth god. What do you want, mortal? I want tribute for the sky father before I before I rain before I rain his power down upon you. <gasps> you notice just behind a guy this uh, Kinrim is there and he's whispering something to the ear of uh, Ludimku. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So he's whispering something to his ear and you know that uh, Kinrim has got these sorcerer's powers, right? He can't he can yeah. speak the language of names. So he's very dangerous and, 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 and imposing. And uh, so, uh, sorry, Ludimku. Yeah. So Ludimku, here's what uh, Kinrim has to say. Looks at you and says, "Well, this is the place you die, mortal." And he draws his blade as well, and he, he what, kind of issues a challenge to you. What does he look like? Oh yeah, you're right. Um, so he's um, he's wearing uh like uh like some kind of feather armor with furs and like you see that everything is in earthen shades and tones and colors right so brown yeah. gray everything resembles the the earth on some level and it's all composed of things that come from the earth right animals that that walk on the earth no no birds no nothing no feathers so he yeah. seems to be worshiping the earth god is himself and um so is he issues his warning and he um like you see that he's um is bigger than you are. It's way more massive than you are. A bit like the Earth, right? It's, it's massive, strong, stable. You're more like fast, agile, and light. Mm -hmm. So, you like you're you're easy. Basically, you're your mirror opposite. Okay, perfect. So yeah. So and he's got this huge uh, kind of sledgehammer, right? He, no, it's not a blade. It's not a blade. He's got a, that huge sledgehammer, right? Something that hits doesn't cut. But yeah, it's it's heavy, right. it's huge, and he All issues right. his challenge. I defy you, mortal, for the for for the glory of uh, Labnu, the Earth God. Okay, so in that case, um, yeah, I'll say, so long as you fight with honor, man to man, then I shall send you to nourish the Earth, dirt worshipper. Oh, okay. So the, uh, the the challenge is on. Um, so I guess that you want to, uh, well, kind of beat him and maybe get a shot at Kinrim as, as well. Yeah, 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 totally. Okay. So you you could you could say something like I you just give you an option here, uh, and, and to explain a bit of game as well. You could say yeah. something like a move aside. <laughs> I want the sorcerer here, right? So that could be what you want out of him. And but he wants to challenge you anyway. So now it's it like the fight is on basically. Um, but you don't want something out of of Ludimku himself, right? Uh, 
well, I want him to stand down. You know, ideally, I wanted him to just like give me um, to give me um, nourishment. But now that I see that Kinrim is here, yep, I, I say, yeah, um, that's it. I suppose you try to stand as a as a, as a stone wall between between me and the and the and the more worthy quarry of my wrath. And I point towards Kinrim. Oh, okay. So it's okay. So so basically, I will sell you down, and then I will face him alone. Okay. So. Uh... So yeah, you might have an option to just give him give to you the sorcerer, right, Kenrim? Uh, but you see, you see that he's not willing to do it. So yeah, roll your dice to uh, to try and then uh, and submit him. Is this so, a coerce or a test myself here? What are we What are we doing? Um, like I'm ready to fight him. You know, I'm yeah, ready to. Fight I, him. I think. Just, I think right now. Like, yeah, it's not much that you want to. Uh, you don't really want something out of him per se, right? You yeah. want something with Kinrim, but not him. So it's more like test yourself. I feel. I feel like it's yeah. more like you're testing yeah. yourself and your might against his might. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So go ahead. Great. Okay. So now I've got these two dice of jet back. So yeah. that's two, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's ten. Roll ten. Jet for gold. Okay, so three strikes in mental dice. Oh my god, mighty feet. And you can pick two consequences. Oh no, three consequences because it's a mighty feat. And do you have any destiny? You you see two destiny here. Two more destiny. Yeah, this is amazing. What am I supposed to do with all this destiny? <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, if you die, you can actually uh, become immortal. Or uh, if you roll poorly, we could we could risk that destiny to help you uh, to help you boost your, your dice roll that okay, you don't so like. Don't worry about that until I'm in a tight spot, and then you'll let me know what my options are with these destiny points. Okay. Exactly. So for now, it's cool that way. So yeah, you get uh, okay. So let's scroll back to test yourself. You get to pick three consequences. Three of these, eh? Okay. Yep. Um. Okay, well, I'm going to succeed in the trial. I am neither harmed nor shamed, and no other is harmed. Okay, I don't need good. another destiny or more worshiper, like more, uh, you know, followers or whatever at this okay. time. So how does it look that you beat uh, Ludim Ku, the Earth follower, right? And, and make it mythic and epic, because it's a mighty feat here. It's above human level. Um, are we... Do we get down off horseback to do this? Yeah. 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 Okay. So he So he 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 takes a big like overhand swipe at me, right? And his and his sledgehammer comes down and I um I kind of like just stand back as it comes down in front of me. Yep. And then I I put my head down against his shoulders and I roll over his back. Oh, and now okay. I'm behind him. And I just like whoop, take his head off with my two, you know, with like scissors action of my of my two blades. Oh, okay. So you fuck the el the head rolls off. off. Like when I'm on my feet, just whoop, take his head. And then I turn oh. towards I turn towards Kinrim and I say, I'll take my prize now. The challenge lies to you. Oh. You know what? I think that this should be our cliffhanger. Yeah. Like we should end there, right? You finally reach Kinrim. We don't know what you're about to do with him. You just dispose of this guy, and now, like, like w that would lead to the next episode if we were to play one. Yeah, that's it. And they're like on another test at myself. If it were to go well, I would try to like off him and maybe try to claim his followers, which would be like my first sort of request from my god that would be that would be met. Yeah. Bring them and the women back to my village. And then leave out on a quest on my own with with these birds, you know, like take all the gold stuff off of them, leave that at my village, and then just leave on another quest to try to return the birds, you know, like this is where another episode could potentially go, you know. Yeah, that that could be amazing episode. So what we'll do now though is we'll type in Discord, we'll type or tail as handed. Okay. Uh. Oh, well, no, okay. Uh, Is that not the actual uh, syntax? No, that's not the actual command. Yeah, we need to, uh, we need to know. Let's go uh, back up. Let's go back up here. Our, Our tail, tail is ended. Is ended, okay. okay. Good, good. It's fine.
Yes. Here ends our tale. Perhaps another adventurer takes it. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. So that that's a good example of a of a of a like how the rules work and the game and the gameplay. I want to thank you so much, Richard, for your time. Yeah, it's my pleasure. So, what do you think about that game? So far, it's a super game. I want to like. What you doing tomorrow? Let's <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah. No. Like, it's fun to see that this uh, this story just sort of emerged very quickly, and um, it took on mythic proportions very quickly. And uh, it, it feels like one sort of one sort of introductory thing happens, and like it's almost setting it up so that he would then leave once again. You know, like this is yeah. just sort of like starts off the thing, and then he'd leave once again on perhaps his greater sort of hero's journey. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I and I, uh, what I like, and just as a fair yeah. warning to your students, like none of this was prepared in advance. It was oh, all yeah. improvised here on the spot. So. As you can see, it's it's easy to come up with with ideas for the story, and you ju you just follow your instincts of what could be interesting that happens next, and uh and yeah, next time we should do with a main dealer. That would that would be amazing. Yeah, yeah I'd love to try that too. Yeah, yeah, I had nothing in mind except I had this image of like a Dothraki from Game of Thrones, and then he saw, then he saw like all of these 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 poor harem women, and I'm like, okay, well maybe he's kind of like a modern guy for a Dothraki. Maybe he's kind of like. A little bit woke, you know. He's like a feminist, Dothraki. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> so yeah, thanks again. Yeah. Uh, see you next yeah. time, Richard. And uh, you folks, uh, we talk again uh, about a game soon. Thanks. Bye. Good luck, guys.